Good morning, Interweb. Spec Biolog, episode one. We did it, Bios. It only took us like three years, but we finally wrapped up the geofiction portion of this project. Today, we start a new series. Cannot, cannot wait to start making some aliens. But first, some preamble. So as a recap, or for any new viewers, on screen now is a montage of all the kind of major mapping projects uh, I embarked upon over the past number of years in constructing this fictional world here, placeholder name Kretak. I'll play out this montage as I go through the housekeeping, but just a quick shout out to patron, viewer, and budding YouTuber Jay Choken. They made this montage in addition to making the new background music for this series. So massive shout out to Jay Choken links in all the usual places please 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 go check them out like subscribe support spread the love jay i really appreciate it now housekeeping point one and probably the most important point this spec bio series is not going to be like bibliridian's alien biospheres underline bold font exclamation point alien biospheres and projects like it on this platform uh, i kind of think of as being documentary class projects meticulously scripted meticulously prepared beautifully animated and illustrated you know tv grade projects this is not what we're going to do here the goal of this series is going to be to kind of document my journey as a total novice in the space in creating my first speculative biosphere it's so it's going to be a depiction of the creative process in all its gory details you're going to watch my absolutely terrible chicken scratch drawings you're going to watch me make mistakes retcon things say dumb things have dumb ideas all the usual parts of the creative process i'm going to document them here in an effort to kind of learn and develop and hopefully to be of inspiration to other novices who might be in a similar position to me so that's point number one point number two this is not a tutorial series underline bold font exclamation mark kind of follows from the previous point i'm not an expert at all so i'm not going to position myself as an authority voice in this space I'm a total novice just figuring things out. So please take this series as, yeah, inspiration and entertainment in which you might accidentally happen to learn something, but that's not the goal of this series. Now, this may not be a format for everyone, so I totally get it if you're like, nah, man, I'm out. Not for me. But I would love for you to give me a try. After all, how bad could it be? <laughs> Answer probably terrible so those are the little bits of housekeeping assuming i haven't put like literally everyone off here let's go uh, do some kingdoms so i have here my photoshop file that i'm going to be using throughout the course of this series uh, on the left here i have a timeline of events on this world based on what we've built thus far pause if you want to have a read over here i got various maps of my world uh, throughout different kind of epochs starting when we want life to come on land or at least terrestrial life to come on land and documenting the state of the world at kind of every mass extinction point that we've tracked so we'll reference that going forward and over here i've made a little chart where we'll probably draw in like little trees of life with the demarcations here being again mass extinctions this is in millions of years and the colors here representing how relatively hot and cold the world is during each of these kind of yeah, epochs or eras or whatever you would call it. So now to begin, uh, let's assume we do in fact want life on this world. I think that's a decent assumption to make. And if that's the case, uh, we probably want to start with kingdoms. Just thinking about the kind of like very, very broad divisions of life on this world. So I think there's no way of getting away from it here. I think we're going to have... Uh, a kingdom, an animal kingdom, and I think we're going to have a plant kingdom. I think if you got an earth-like planet, you're not going to be able to get away from that. So let's let's not reinvent the wheel, particularly on a novice project. Let's stick with that. Uh, now on Earth, we have a separate kingdom of uh, fungi, and I guess we also have like you know separate. I'm not sure if they be kingdoms or domains or something, or whatever. Just a whole bunch of microbes, right? I'm just going to chuck them all together because in this project. I'm not going to care about microbes at all. They will exist. They will be there. We're not going to talk about them. Now, fungi, though, like I said, separate kingdom on Earth. Uh, I think to get away from Earth, it might be prudent to make sure fungi is not a separate kingdom. And when I say fungi, I mean saprotrophs, like stuff that uh, feeds on decaying matter. 
So let's not make that a separate kingdom. Let's stick it in one of these kingdoms. Now, admittedly, some members of each of these kingdoms will be saprotrophic, will fill those roles. But I guess I'm just trying to look for where uh, most of them are. What's the dominant saprotrophic kingdom? Where would you find most of the saprotrophs in? And I think it makes the most sense for me for it to be the plant kingdom. So I guess we'll say plus fungi. Sure. There's, there's plants on Earth that have given up uh, autotrophy, photosynthesis, and just uh, exist on decaying matter. So it's happened on Earth. It can happen here. Yeah, I think that's fine. Now, unfortunately, though, that leaves us in the position where we're like, that's it. That's all we could do. We have a very, very, very Earth-like planet. So we can't do anything too wild at this level here. But in World Brothers Log, we did talk about having two separate kingdoms of plants. Because remember, it tied into the idea that we want um, different kind of pigmentations to be used as food dyes to check for the safety and toxicity of the food. So let's see if we can work that, right? Let's say we want another plant kingdom, which I think is fine, right? Because plants, like, they're they're much less kind of competitively excluded. So they are, the idea of there being, like, competing kingdoms of plants, I don't think that's too crazy. It'd be a bit weirder if we had competing kingdoms of, like, big macroscopic animals, so to speak. So yeah, I guess I'll call these plants. Plant 2. Great name. Which is good, because then we could uh, invoke different colors. Different kingdoms use different kind of pigmentation. From World Brothers Log, the, the star, about which Kretak orbits, outputs a lot of its light into in the UV. And its peak output was in and around a sort of tealy sort of color. So we'll say, we'll make one of them, just for now anyone will say, we'll make plants, plants one, we'll make them just, we'll, we'll say teal, for argument's sake. They are the color of the peak output of the star like green plants on Earth. We, we, I, I'm pretty sure we can invoke basically any color here. There's a myriad of ways of justifying yeah, essentially any color. But I, I do really like my choose the color of your plants from the peak output of the star or the complement to that color. So the complement of teal would be a kind of orangey sort of color, which is nice, nice contrast. The whole world will look like a Michael Bay film. Wonderful. So if we do that, we'd have to later on, Not it's not really a story for now, but we need to figure out you know, what's the distribution of these two kingdoms. And immediately I'm, I'm thinking again, the color helps here somewhat, though I think it's probably a multifaceted thing. Teal, peak output of the star, blocks the peak radiation. So maybe our plant kingdom one will do well in kind of areas of very intense radiation. So tropical zone, that sort of thing. Whereas plants two, which are an orange color, let in more of the light. So maybe they don't want to get sunburnt down in the tropics, so maybe they'll uh, be distributed more in the temperate zone, polar regions, that that sort of thing. That could be a potential thing. Probably wouldn't be like an even split, like, you know, above the 54th latitude, everything's orange, below, everything's teal. Uh, but just vague musings, I think we could probably get away with doing something like that. I could even see like different colors uh, based on the kind of forest canopy. Maybe big trees uh, are, are teal sort of color. They're on top of the canopy. They receive all this intense uh, radiation, whereas down below where there's less light coming in, you want to soak up more of it. Maybe you, maybe the orange plants do well there. I think there's a whole load of ways in which we could justify um, uh, this sort of kingdom split and figure out cool distributions. Again, not a story for, for now, that's for later, but just, just, yeah, like I said, musing. Now, that's kind of cool little bit unearth-like without being too crazy because again it, it's i think it's a little bit important not not to go too wild on a first project uh, but having said that i think i'm going to do something a little bit wild here i had this idea to lean hard into mixotrophy for this setting or at least ancestral mixotrophy uh, for anyone who's not aware mixotrophy right uh, an autotroph is a plant they get energy from non-living things like the sun a heterotroph gets energy from eating things like us Whereas a mixotroph can do both. So I had this idea to be like, well, within this animal kingdom, maybe way back when there was this mixotroph, which then decides to specialize, right? Because being like a mixotroph, you're kind of a jack of all trades. And maybe there's some pressure. Some mixotroph was like, I'm actually going to double down on the autotrophy thing. So I'm just going to go full autotroph here. And then there's another mixotroph who's kind of like, I'm going to go full heterotroph here. Essentially, I'm going to become plant-like, almost entirely plant-like, and I'm going to become almost entirely animal-like. So if we can if we can do something like that, we could stick one of our plants, not as a unique kingdom, but like in the animal kingdom, because they all derive from this sort of mixotroph. I think that's a bit wild, 
but I think it's it, it's it, it might be a little bit cool. So I guess it would look something like this. One kingdom of animals and what is in effect plants. One kingdom of true plants and then all of our microbes. Oh, and sorry, the fungi lads. Where do the fungi lads go? Oh, do you know what we could do? We could, given that we said there'd be saprotrophic members in each of these kingdoms, we could make, maybe we could do an even sort of split. So they're both, they both have big fungi representatives within them. I'm going to write fungi plus plus. Like this is, we're going to say this is the main dude. Um, I'm immediately thinking we could do something where there's a split. So we could have like marine saprotrophs be, be of one kingdom. They kind of fill up that space. Uh, and then land saprotrophs be of another kingdom. They fill up that space. So we get fungi representatives in each of the kingdoms. We don't care about the microbes. I'm very sorry, microbiologists. But think about it this way. Unlike the poor zoologists, you're spared me butchering the, the, the field you care so deeply about. So every cloud has a silver lining, right? And the cool thing about this is that uh, I've learned through learning about spec bio that plants are an absolute bugger to design, specifically to make them look, you know, uniquely distinct from earth plants. So I reckon these true plants here, they look basically like earth plants. No massive difference there at all. But because these pseudo plants are coming from what was, let's, again, let's call it more of an animal ancestor, they might maintain some of the, the things we associate with animals, like, for example, symmetry. So we could get like symmetrical plants versus asymmetrical plants and maybe there's some play there to make at least a portion of the um, the flora on the world look a little bit more unique. At least that's the hope anyways. But yeah, I think for now we're good. We got three kingdoms, animals plus pseudo plants, true plants, and then our nondescript microbes. Hopefully all of this isn't too awful. Let me know in comments what you think. And yeah, with that done, next time uh, I guess we can start looking at body plants. Cue outro. Once again, shout out and thanks to Jay Choken for the montage and the background music. I will say this at the end of every video in this series, but I want to give a huge shout out to Bibliridian, links in all usual places. Without him, none of this would have been possible. For the past number of years, we've been hanging out on sort of like a bi-weekly basis, and he's been teaching me uh, about biology and spec bio and all of that. I am forever in debt to all of the help and advice that he has given. Shout out Bibliridian. All right. That's it. Have a good one, folks. And until next time, it grouse.